Welcome. I'm going to be discussing the permissive use disclosure of personal information, specifically the theory and application of the exceptions to IPP 10 and 11 of New Zealand Privacy Act 2020 and the implications for immigration and migrants. My focus will primarily be on Immigration New Zealand, which is part of MB. Immigration New Zealand is made up of branches and the Border and Visa Services branch is the one which most clients will generally have contact with. But it also includes other branches, including the Refugee and Migrant Services, and Compliance and Verification. INZ is frequently in the news, most recently due to the early morning visits by the Compliance branch of INZ, and the woman who complained that a baby doesn't own property. I'll be critiquing whether the process of redaction of information is at a reasonable level to enable the claimants to address concerns, notably asylum seekers. In order to carry out their role, Immigration New Zealand collects and collates a huge volume of information. This information is collected from a variety of sources, the most obvious being the individual who owns the information, but information can also be gathered about the individual from other sources and this may be information that the individual is not aware of or has not disclosed either consciously or unconsciously. This information is gathered from organisations which Immigration New Zealand has a memorandum of understanding or an information sharing or matching agreement with. It is also shared with these organisations. I intend looking at IPP 10 and 11 with regard to who information is disclosed to and received from, and the impact on the amount of information disclosed to and withheld from an individual when they make an information request to Immigration New Zealand. My specific focus is a sector of Immigration New Zealand dealing with refugee and migrant services. Those who choose to apply for refugee or protected person status at the border of or from within New Zealand, rather than those who are selected through the refugee quota system. I'll also be looking at what an individual may believe regarding who receives access to their information and what is the reality of the situation. When an individual provides their information to Immigration New Zealand, they're likely to believe that only Immigration New Zealand has had access to the information provided by them. And when they request information from Immigration New Zealand, they may expect to receive all personal information regarding them and held by Immigration New Zealand to be disclosed to them. So how do these ex exceptions apply to immigration and migrant issues? Immigration New Zealand may collect and use personal information about individuals for the purposes of processing visa applications, conducting immigration checks and making decisions about whether to grant a visa. And this personal information is collected from individuals outside New Zealand who are applying for a visa to enter New Zealand to work, study or visit. And this, they may not even receive these visas, but their information is still, is still held. And individuals already in New Zealand who are on a visa or work, study or or visit the visa and wish to apply for the same visa to be reissued, a variation of conditions on their current visa, or a different category of visa. This data, and as well as data received through information matching or sharing agreements with other agencies, may also be accessed by the compliance and investigation arms of Immigration New Zealand, where there is a belief that an individual may be breaching the terms of their visa no longer holds a valid visa to remain in New Zealand or has certain character issues. When an individual provides the information, they are likely to assume that they are dealing with a visa processing agency based on the name rather than the in-your-face nomenclature of the US agency responsible for immigration, the Department of Homeland Security, with regard to Immigration New Zealand in IPP 10.1 E1, where the use is to avoid prejudice to the prevention, detection, investigation, prosecution and punishment of offences, this is section most often relates to the compliance, verification and investigation branches of Immigration New Zealand. Any concerns 
regarding fraudulent documents being provided to support an application, many character issues, particularly providing possibly misleading or withheld information, often require assessment by verification and communication with other agencies, not just government agencies, to verify the information provided is legitimate. Compliance is responsible for investigating possible serious breaches of visa conditions held, and in the case of serious breaches, deportation of individuals unlawfully in New Zealand under the Immigration Act. The exceptions regarding disclosure of personal information may have far-reaching reaching implications. In collating information, Immigration New Zealand discloses information to other agencies with which they have a memorandum of understanding or information sharing or matching agreement under IPP 111E1. Much of this sharing of information between Immigration New Zealand and overseas agencies relates to the FCC or Five Country Conference which is an international agreement to share information related to immigration matters. The members are Australia, Canada, New Zealand, United Kingdom and the United States. The FCC shares biometric information to detect immigration and identity fraud. Members don't share the biographical data like names or personal details unless they match a fingerprint. If the um, information identifies possible immigration or identity fraud, it can support prosecution and deportation of individuals. Therefore, perhaps it does meet the requirement for use and detection of an offence. There are also cases of what is known as B-matches, where there may be a similar name where the fingerprints are not attached to the file and where this information is provided with a CC, FCC match report. In preparing information requests, there is the potential that this information may be overlooked and not withheld, and in fact shared with the requester, whereas it may not relate to them. When considering the IPPs and their use and disclosure of information, it's important to consider that Section 24 of the Privacy Act 2020 states that nothing in IPP 11 limits or affects a provision contained in any New Zealand Actment that authorises or requires personal information be made available, or a provision contained in any other New Zealand Act that imposes a prohibition or restriction in relation to the availability of personal information, or regulates the manner in which personal information may be obtained or made available. Immigration New Zealand is governed by the Immigration Act of 2009, which specifically contains sections allowing sharing of information between Immigration New Zealand and other departments of the state and overseas agencies. The agreements for departments within New Zealand overseas can only be made after the Chief Executive has consulted with the Privacy Commissioner. According to the Immigration New Zealand website, Immigration New Zealand at the moment has a number of information matching and sharing agreements. In New Zealand, including with the Department of Corrections, Department of Internal Affairs, Ministry of Health and Health New Zealand and Māori Health Authority, Ministry of Justice, New Zealand Customs Service, New Zealand Police, New Zealand Transport Agency and the Registrar General. With IPP 11, I'm looking much more closely at those asylum seekers who apply for refugee and protected person status rather than those New Zealand accepts under the quota system. There is no information on the Immigration New Zealand website as to how many applications are received, but anecdotally, around 35% are successful. There are avenues for appeal, but withholding of information may reduce the ability to do so most effectively. While a claim is in place, the applicants are entitled to health and education benefits, cannot be deported and may be eligible for work visas, so simply to have a claim in place is advantageous. The majority will claim asylum at the border or soon after arriving, but a number will have claimed it when they are faced with deportation for a serious breach of their visa conditions or for being unlawful, which is remaining in New Zealand after the visa has expired. This may cause some degree of prejudice against these claimants as they have been in New Zealand for some time and have had at no time previously made a claim this would most definitely be raised in any interviewing of the claimants in this position. The majority of asylum seekers will be represented by a lawyer, since a lot hangs on their success. Refugees and protected persons who meet the requirements do so 
due to having been unable to return to their country of residence or usual residence, due to a well-founded fear of being persecuted due to race, religion, nationality, social group or political opinion, or are unwilling to return due to threats of torture, loss of life or serious harm. It's usually the process for all information held on the client by Immigration New Zealand to be requested by this representative. Once asylum has been sought, there are certain allowances for the sharing of information directly between the officer assessing the claim for refugee and protected status and other government departments rather than through compliance or verification. This is in part due to the fact that the refugee and protected persons claimants do receive greater protection of confidentiality of information under Section 151 of the Immigration Act 2009. This increased confidentiality means only the Refugee Status Unit is able to handle requests for information where there's a claim under this category. This extended confidentiality and the rights under Section 164 of the Immigration Act to not be deported while awaiting consideration of the claim and after approval, except in very limited circumstances, has had some undue impacts indirectly for the New Zealand public on occasion. One such was the case of the man who came to be known as the New Lynn Terrorist. He had gone through the refugee claims process and had been declined, but on appeal had been granted refugee status, ensuring ongoing confidentiality and limited possibilities for deportation. He then gained permanent residence, cementing this right even more. Information on the Immigration New Zealand Media Centre does say that they were seeking avenues to deport him prior to the attacks, but the rights to appeal a removal of refugee status had made it difficult, as again, he cannot be deported while he has a, an appeal underway. This, in turn, creates a lot of concern for Immigration New Zealand with regard to the New Zealand public and their perception of Immigration New Zealand. When an information request is processed generally, withholding information relates to three sections of the Privacy Act, and some sections of each, due to the relationship with other overseas agencies and sharing information and the inclusion of reports from compliance and fraud and information request disclosures, occasionally information will be withheld under Section 51 A and B, Security, Defence and International Relations, as a reason for refusing access to personal information. However, a perhaps surprising amount of this information is disclosed, including adverse FCC reports. Occasionally information may be withheld if there's an ongoing assessment, in which case the officer undergoing the assessment wishes to use this information as a challenge, or an investigation that is relying on this information is, under, is still underway. Section 53 is where the main reason to withhold information is found, since it is, of course, other reasons for refusing access to personal information. The subsections most commonly used to withhold information are 53b1, information relating to other people, as a surprising amount, possibly, of information about third parties does appear in application files, even though it does not belong to the applicant. Given the amount of research and information gathering, required to ensure an applicant meets the requirements to be granted either refugee and protected person status. Section 53C is frequently used as a reason to withhold information where the disclosure of the information would likely to prejudice the maintenance of the law, including the prevention, investigation and detection of offences and the right to a fair trial. Often those most likely to be increased risk of having information withheld due to Section 53 are those who would face deportation because they're about to be released from prison, have come to the attention of the police for criminal contact, and those who have exhausted their pathways to remain in New Zealand have become unlawful may not have quite so much withheld, but they still all have a significant amount of input from compliance investigations. If they are deported, they are subject to a prohibition of up to five years on returning to New Zealand, as well as having to repay any costs associated with their deportation before they can return. They do, however, have the option to voluntarily leave, in which case they may not have any, any prohibition on returning, though they may not have a visa granted based on the reasons for 
the investigation. According to Immigration New Zealand website, if their claim is accepted, refugees and protected persons are eligible to access employment and income support and public health services, the same as New Zealand residents or citizens. And refugees and protected persons are eligible to apply for permanent residence and New Zealand citizenship after five years of residence. So there is a lot at stake. Claimants or the representatives request all files held by Immigration New Zealand so that they can attempt to identify any possible issues that may be raised in the interviews and prepare a defence. They also want to be able to correct any incorrect information, given that there is potential for information provided by overseas or New Zealand agencies to be incorrect. Requests to correct information under IPP7 or to challenge the accuracy of information under IPP8 are possible, but only if the information is available to the claimant. The ability to withhold information can lead to a lack of transparency and accountability, the potential to overreach, and to use this exception as a justification to withhold information beyond what is necessary or reasonable. And there's also a risk that there may be instances where information is held withheld improperly or unnecessarily due to the level of knowledge of the act that the individual process and the request has and the power that files that may have not for release stamped on sections of them, despite in some cases having no defendable reason for it to be withheld. Information from Immigration New Zealand says there is no single guidelines for pro processing inf immigration requests to Immigration New Zealand and therefore interpretation may be very individual and incorrect advice has the potential to be decimated across a branch, particularly when training new staff, because each area is setting up their own guidelines. Certainly, the withholding of information may act as an ace up the sleeve for Immigration New Zealand when challenging claims, but it may also result in more legal challenges, both of interpretation and in more appeals to the Immigration Protection Tribunal, Ministerial Discretion and the Appeals Court by lawyers who do not agree with Immigration New Zealand's interpretation and the number of successful appeals may support this view. With regard to solutions, it's difficult to mitigate these concerns unless information is eventually disclosed. However, of course, the right to appeal to the Privacy Commissioner to have the information disclosed is open to the claimants and their representatives. How often this is taken advantage of, I don't know, but I, every information request does have to disclose that this is available as an option. Thank you. Have a good day.